Right, here's a look at a Philips MR26, or XGS103, as I think they're called as well. That's a bulb. That's also the tripod I've been knocking over. Let's take the lid off. This is the base. You can't often see these on the floor when they fall off. This is the bulb, a low pressure sodium one. I always keep it in the shed, which is a, and it's quite cold now, so I'll just leave it in here for a bit of insulation. Massive bulb here. Sodium, low pressure sodium, 35 watts. I will, be, I will be uploading a separate video that shows this thing powering up. Oh, let's get the screwdriver. Let's take the photo so loud. Um, this is it. That's the label. It's barely readable, but it's from, I think, 1990-something. The top part here is the top part of it. I'm just repeating myself, literally. Um, there's a date code in here, I think, of either 1989 or 1968, but I'm pretty sure it's 89 because these didn't, these didn't exist in 1968. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's 1989. That makes sense as well. Um, which which screw did it um, no, undo, undoes it? That one, I think. There we go. Let's undo that one. It's joined by an earth wire here. There's a burn mark from the badass there, or choke. That's a newer igniter. And that's the igniter, that capacitor. Thermal block, photo socket, that takes this base here. Um, yeah, you can see all the parts inside there. Igniter, no, no, that's the igniter, capacitor, and ballast, and lamp holder. It is a standard bayonet lamp holder, so you can fit a bayonet bulb in there, but I'd advise you don't if you have one of these, because it probably will ruin something in here, or the bulb itself. Um, earthed there. It's got, it's got a weird way of mounting it. So you put the pole in there. There's a mark from the old pole there. And that thing comes up. And then you bolt it down from the other side here. There's two bolts there. Let's get the camera a bit lower down. There we go. It's upside down, but yeah. Just about to see what's going on. Right, I'm going to put the thing back together and put the bulb in wire out. Right, I've wired it up with a very small cable, which I probably could have used the cable for. Let's get my socket out, plug it in, and turn the main lights off, that might be useful. That's gone really dark. Let's extend the tripod. Um, let's cover up the photo cell or something. So what I have, leave me alone. I'm going to use a crisp packet. <laughs> Right, I'll turn it on. I haven't turned it on for about a year. So this is the first time turning it on for about a year. Yes, yeah, the classical orange glow you see from, well, red I suppose, pinky nice red glow that you see. The entire arc tube, which is that thing that's an arc, um, will eventually go orange and it get much brighter. And the flicker isn't visible that much the human eye but obviously the camera is quite visible. Let's get closer. Let's adjust my camera so it's not falling over. Right, let's move the light then. There we go. Right, and that's it. Oh. Okay, that's odd. That's really odd. It's got power. The room's got power. But it just turned off. It could be the photo cell receiving a signal, I think. But that's strange because I bought this um, off eBay, this photo cell. So the council haven't set it up with a network yet. Because we do use a network of these, lamp of these sensors around where I live. So why it's turned off, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's got a wireless signal now, though. Which is odd because I haven't set it up with anything, so I don't know what's going on there. But that's it. And yeah, there is there is still power going to it because the, there's no power cut or the fuse hasn't blown, so I don't know what's happened. But yeah, that's it.